Throughout history, in Spain, there's been about 1,450 guitar makers over the centuries, from lutes to biwelas to Baroque guitars to our modern guitar with the six string that was added in the late 1700s. By 1810, virtually all guitars had a six string to it. And on the 16th of September of this year, 2021, I started to do the index of the Biwela and the Spanish guitar, published in 2004 by Jose Romanias and his wife, Marion Harris Winspear. About 25 months to the day before that, I had asked Jose, I said, hey, can you send me your Microsoft Word file? I'm going to have Jan de Chloe of Belgium do the index of that book. And as busy as he is, I didn't hear from him. One, and once in a while I would. Eventually said, oh, the, the printer is worried that uh, you're going to copy it and publish it. And I thought, well, that's kind of crazy. He hasn't even sold his first edition completely. Then the printer passed away. And the brother of the printer had the same attitude, having discussed it with his brother in his ailing life before he passed away. So from the 16th of September until the 1st of October, I spent two to four hours a day uh, taking all the social history out of the book. Here it is. My name is on three pages. I've known Jose since 1999 is a colleague to answer questions, provide data. I got my name in this book because I provided info of 1846 Juan Profumo guitar made in Calle Los Flamencos in Cadiz, and a uh, 1890s Salvia Morbe made in Barcelona, and also the oldest known business card for Ignacio Fleda with an address that was not known to any dealer or any aficionado that owned a great flayed guitar. And so I uh, needed to do the index. I had initially found a reason to do this earlier this year in the Domingo Pratt Dicionario de Guitaristas y Guitareros, Dictionary of Guitarists and Guitar Makers, is the entry of Santos Hernandez, the well-known guitar maker. We have one in stock, 1934, Spruce and Brazilian. You've seen the videos possibly on our YouTube channel and on the website. And so there's a mention of Valentin Viudas and Ortega without a first name. And Valentin Viudas was located at Calle Toledo 34 and up the street was Rafael Ortega originally from Granada and he was at Calle Toledo 55. And I said oh these are the sequential employers of Santos Hernandez before he went to work for Mamo Ramirez circa 1898. You may read information, or I should say misinformation, on the net about how Santos Hernandez went to Granada to study and work for Jose Ortega. That's not true. Jose Ortega had been building guitars from 1880. I recently got a book that shows 1880, and I was offered a guitar a few weeks ago that said 188 and a space for the fourth digit in the address. But Rafael Ortega was down the street on the other side, maybe two blocks away. These guys are 21 street numbers apart, just a couple blocks away. So throughout history, we have had 315 guitar makers in Madrid. We've had 130 guitar makers in Malaga, 89 in Granada, 125 in City of Barcelona, 52 in Cordoba, 
350 in Valencia. Valencia is one of the cities that provide a lot of student guitars, as well as upper grade guitars for makers in the larger cities. 100 guitars, uh, guitar makers in Sevilla, and 90 guitar makers in the city of Cadiz, the Haritano uh, Guitareros made those. But what prompted me to do this video today was I recently found uh, a few weeks ago the uh, oldest known address for Francisco Gonzalez. He's mostly known as a good guitar maker who trained Manuel and Jose Ramirez Malo, uh, Manuel El, Ma El Bueno and Jose El Malo, the good and the bad. They're both very extraordinary makers, but Manuel trained uh, Santos, Hernandez, Domingo Estesso, and those guys are still legendary, despite double tops and all the uh, things that are going on in today's day, a century later. <clears throat> in 1848, uh, Francisco Gonzalez was located at uh, Calle de la Cruz, number 32. I got this from the newspaper uh, Diario Oficial de Avisos de Madrid from, uh, this is from July 27, 1848, page 2. And at the same time, we have another guitar maker who had been on the block since about 1820, Gregorio Alvarez Caracito, uh, who was born in 1790, with Francisco Gonzalez being born in 1820. In the earlier part of his career, Gregorio Caracito, as he was known in the trade papers, uh, that would list the address of, of a variety of guitar makers. I have one here. Here's 1861, showing three string makers, eight guitar makers. The paragraph at the bottom is a eulogy on the works of Francisco Gonzalez. But at the time of the 1848 uh, listing of Francisco Gonzalez having an older address uh, than we find in the Jose Romania's book from 2004. Gregorio Caracito was also on Calle de la Cruz. Earlier, about 1820, he was on Calle uh, Ancha de Majaderitos, and at the same time, his fellow colleagues just blocks away were uh, Juan Moreno, as well as uh, who died, I think, 1834, 1836 and uh, also Juan Munoa and uh, Manuel Munoa. The Munoa uh, family was involved publishing a uh, Dionisio Aguado uh, method book, or I should say they sold the book that was published. I, I did a deal with Ma Matanio Orfe, who passed away a few years ago, and provided that so he could publish it. It was an autographed version of Domingo, uh, excuse me, of Dionisio Aguado. In 1850, we had 281,000 people living in Madrid. And so you can see a, a decade later, we have eight guitar makers with thriving shops. It's very possible, not known, there's never been written as to who taught Francisco Gonzalez, but it, it, it's very possible that uh, Gregorio Caracito was his maestro. In 1847, Trinitario Huerta was in Madrid and he was at the Gregorio Caracito shop and he had two guitars. He was a very well-known uh, concert artist and uh, published a variety of his songs. And I recently, just days ago, I think on Saturday, I found out about the existence of him <clears throat> being at the Gregorio Caracito shop on Calle de la Cruz in 1847 uh, and trying out a couple different Rosewood back and sides guitars 
that he was going to use in a local concert and take with him to do concerts internationally. Yeah, that may cover what I was hoping to share with today. Uh, in 1860, when Antonio de Torres was working in Sevilla, in Seville, Spain, population was 118,000. And in 1858, he won his award for making the uh, guitar that had several thousand pieces. I think he spent two years on that guitar, and he won the Sevilla Exposition, uh, Provincial Exposition of Artisans, be it guitar makers, be it people that did uh, cabinetry work, people that did uh, work with cloth, etc. Then he moved to, uh, in the late 1860s, he moved to uh, Almeria, where he was born and uh, that was a town of 40,000 people. And I recently acquired a Jose Lopez Beltran guitar. We'll have videos of that in a few weeks. It's to be shipped from Europe tomorrow. And uh, he worked with Taurus from 1887 to 1892. So this is kind of a snapshot of some of my latest forays into uh, being a snowball downhill to research as much as can be known about the early great influential makers that have created the guitar world we enjoy today. Thank you.